Exposition dumps. When a game goes, hey, this is the bit where you learn all the lore. Here's 50 questions to ask a couple select characters and they'll suddenly turn into third grade teachers and explain it all to you. Or alternatively, you don't get to interact with it at all and you just have to watch a cutscene. Simply put, they knew universally suck and it takes a lot to make them anything better than a dreadful slog. But there's this one exposition dump and you really can't say it's anything but an exposition dump that's one of the highlights of its game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last round. After just walking through the front door, there's a lot to talk about. So let's go over things one at a time. First, this music. This loud, aggressive rock that blasts the entire time you're in there. It's music that demands your attention. The kind of thing you normally wouldn't want to put in a section that's entirely characters talking. It makes it hard to hear them. That's brilliant. It is one of the many things that add to the feeling that these guys really don't give a shit about you. This isn't some plaza or hub meant for casual conversation. This is a rough bar where people were minding their own business and doing their own thing until you strolled in and interrupted. They're not turning their music down for you. If you want to talk to them, you just gotta deal with it. Since Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is a relatively niche game from 2004, with a really stupid title, I'll go over what you need to know to properly understand and appreciate the last round. Don't worry, I'll make this quick. You're a newly turned vampire forced to work for Prince LaCroix after he spared your life. He was, uh, probably gonna kill you until Nines Rodriguez spoke up. Then Smiling Jack here gives you the tutorial, and later Nines saves your life again from chaotic evil vampires. LaCroix is a Camarilla leader. They uphold the masquerade which is a rule set vampires must adhere to to stay hidden. And if a vampire violates the masquerade, the Camarilla takes them out. Nines and Jack are Anarchs, which are a group that generally agree with the masquerade, but hate the Camarilla. Jack, and more importantly Nines, both tell you to meet them at this bar, the last round. Prince LaCroix says that you should meet them, hoping to shut them up for at least a little bit, and maybe if he's lucky, their attitude will turn you away from the Anarchs and more towards him. And that there is a pretty good example of a sloppy exposition dump, but at least it was quick. Upon entering the last round, the first thing you'll probably want to do is talk to Smiling Jack. He catches your eye as soon as you walk in, thanks to his distinct color palette. And you recognize him, because he's always the first person that you talk to when you start the game. And if you play through the full tutorial, you spend a lot of time with him. After catching up with Jack, the next thing on your to-do list is to talk to Nines Rodriguez. Now he's clearly not on the bottom floor, so you go to head upstairs, but are ambushed by Skelter. And if you look, you can see that this pinball guy is actually used as a divider between the stairs that go to Nines and where Jack is standing. You won't get ambushed by Skelter when you go towards Jack. This makes it clear that Skelter is protective of Nines in particular. When you pass him, Skelter greets you with a barrage of insults. What does the prince have his little bitch doing today? You cannot get to this point in the game without working for LaCroix and with the Camarilla. So when you walk into this bar, all the vampires inside already have reasons to hate you. So Skelter gives you shit and is pretty happy for you to get out of his hair. But if you keep talking with him, he starts to tell you how horrible it is to be a vampire. See, Skelter's a Vietnam veteran, but he says he still found serving in Nam preferable to obeying the Camarilla. Oh, and he is happy to talk about the history of vampires with you. And this is a good example of how the game does exposition. It's biased and rambling. He doesn't give a neutral, factual recounting of history. He gives what sound like conspiracy theories. And the reason he's telling you this is that nobody else wants to hear it. He's talking to you about this stuff because it's what he wants to talk about. He's essentially venting at you, hoping it will somehow convince you to agree with him. It's very human. Ironically, he wants to talk about this topic, so he's willing to answer the questions of even someone he doesn't like. Once you're done with Skelter, you head upstairs to look for Nines. And you see him immediately at the far end of the room. But right at the top of the stairs is Damsel. Her eye-catching design and deliberate placement make you want to talk to her next, rather than the person that you went upstairs to see. When you talk to her, she eagerly insults you with even more fervor than Skelter. You are my goddamn problem! Anyone who would lay it down for some cape in an ivory tower deserves what they get! She is the least level-headed in the bar, and everyone there knows it. She despises the Camarilla, and you're their brand new fancy toy. 
so she hates you too. She clearly loves tearing into Camarilla, but she can't just strut up to them and start shouting. Having one in her domain gives her free reign to shout at a Cami about how awful their group is. So yelling at you and insulting you is what she wants to talk about. And it's obvious that the other vampires in this bar have already heard her go over this shit a million times. So having somebody new to rant to is an opportunity she will not pass up. There are multiple points where you can't exit the conversation because she won't stop talking. And finally, there's Nines. Cleverly positioned so that way you pass everyone else on your way to him. He saved your life twice by this point, but you don't really know him. And as soon as you start talking with him, it is immediately obvious that he's trying to drive a wedge between you and the Camarilla. He's very direct, answers your questions, and doesn't treat you with that same open hostility that Skelter and Damsel do. Nines hits on many of the same points as Damsel, but in a much more clear and less shouty way. He doesn't demand that you join him, and he doesn't try to leverage the fact that you'd be dead twice over without him. It's the others that bring that up. He explains how his views formed from growing up during the Great Depression. Vampire lifespans are neat, aren't they? And he makes it very clear that the Camarilla are his enemies. Once you're done talking with him, you have to pass Damsel again on your way out, giving you another chance to talk to her if you didn't before. These three all have varying approval of you depending on the questions you ask and how you respond to what they say. It's mostly about whether your questions and responses seem to favor the Camarilla or the Anarchs. Even what are essentially the same question will have differing effects depending on phrasing. This entwines these simple exposition questions with one of the main aspects of the game, the faction conflict. But hold on, what about Jack? I brushed right over him. Well, Jack is his own man. He's older than everyone else in the bar combined, being a 17th century pirate. All he's working towards are his own goals, and you can't make Jack hate you for a few reasons. First off, you're practically a newborn compared to him, so he's pretty willing to let a lot go due to how young and dumb you are. And second, you're useful to him. Jack is a character best experienced for yourself. They managed to pull off the rare thing of making a character that's powerful, feared, respected, and loved without him becoming a Mary Sue. Or a Gary Stu, I guess. Now, after digging into it like this, the last round doesn't really sound like an exposition dump at all, does it? It sounds more like a relationship and alliance building segment. And that's why it's brilliant. If you've been paying attention to the footage playing throughout this video, you'll have seen lots of bits where they go into the lore and the history between the two groups, as well as delving into vampire society as a whole, one of the most complicated aspects of this world. This is an exposition dumped through and through. It's the heavy characterization that makes it so much better. The characters tell you the lore they care about. Skelter is a meathead and doesn't really give you the nuance of the politics. But he will tell you the more crazy conspiratorial stuff when nobody else will, because that's what he cares about. Nines and Damsel don't talk about the mystical side of things because politics is what they care about. You don't even know Damsel's history because she never feels like bringing it up. However, we'll probably find that out in the future now, won't we? When these characters tell you something, it's because they either want to talk about it or because you hearing it is beneficial to them. Now, like anything else, the last round does have its flaws. The loud, distracting music works perfectly to set the tone, but it means you really do need the subtitles on. See, the Camarilla claims all of us are members, even if we don't want to be, which is, of course, the biggest little horseshit a man ever heard. And the characters all awkwardly stand around when not being talked to. But it is a 16-year-old game, and what they do have animated still holds up shockingly well. Despite the flaws, I can't think of another exposition dump that does what it sets out to do more perfectly and more stylishly than the last round. It feels like a place that the characters are actively choosing to spend their time in. In too many games, characters suddenly act very detached when giving the player lore. They're used as tools to deliver exposition rather than treated like characters explaining things that are very important to them. Even the weaker exposition dumps in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines still make sense from a character perspective. Smiling Jack gives you the tutorial because he has plans for you and he wants you to last more than five minutes. LaCroix needs somebody who's working for him to have all the information that could help them accomplish his goals. And walking Lord Dump Beckett is just a chill, apolitical guy who enjoys knowledge and is happy to share it. So in terms of making a good exposition dump, what can other games learn from the last round? First off, have characters talk about topics that they genuinely care about, not just topics that they know about. Yeah, I could tell you about the history of the movement about our struggle. What's any of that shit mean anyway? Do we want to sit through history class here? 
Second, make sure they have a reason for telling you everything they do. If I went to a bar in real life and started asking people I don't know random questions, they'd really only be willing to answer me if they enjoy talking about the topic or if they benefited from telling me. And third, have bias on full display. These guys care about these topics and they are not going to set aside how they feel just to give you the basic facts. They don't want to let you take it all in and come to your own conclusion. They want you to agree with them. And finally, it's important to know when it's time to just stop talking. Thanks for watching, everyone. Oh, uh, also... Try not to wake Grandpa Munster and kill the world, huh? <laughs>